Uh, one uh, very prominent Birmingham artist uh, to receive uh, uh, PWAP funding uh, was Carrie Hill. Uh, Carrie Hill was a native of Vance, Alabama. She had moved to uh, Birmingham uh, with her family in 1891, and she studied uh, watercolor initially with a, a prominent local artist named Caroline Lavelle. Uh, she moved her studies outside of Birmingham. She went and studied with the tonalist Elliot Dangerfield in North Carolina in 1910. And she returned to Birmingham and she established herself uh, in the Studio Arts Building at Five Points, uh, Five Points South. And she remained, that was in 1917, she remained in that studio for 47 years. She is pr probably, of any Birmingham artist, had the greatest impact on the local art scene. Uh, she was uh, absolutely instrumentally involved in every single civic arts organization imaginable, served as the president of, of several of them, and she didn't just rest on her laurels. Even though she was very well established here in Birmingham, she started off teaching art in her studio at Five Points. She taught initially China painting, but later uh, sketching and oil painting. But she was always broadening horizon, her horizons in terms of her uh, artistic training. Uh, she went on uh, to study with uh, George Elmer Brown, a uh, well-known uh, Northeastern painter, and uh, first met him in 1923 and traveled with him to Europe on uh, many occasions. The type of painting uh, for which Terry Hill is best known uh, is this type of landscape painting. This is a Foothill of the Pyrenees, uh, the result of one of her trips to, to Europe with George Elmer Brown. This is in the permanent collection of the Birmingham Museum of Art. And Carrie, Hill, uh, Carrie Hill's work is characterized by uh, lively brushwork, uh, very bright colors, uh, and uh, it, you could say that it has a lot in common with uh, American Impressionism, although it does come after the, the age of Impressionism proper. Um, when she got her commission to paint in mural uh, for the uh, East Lake Branch uh, Library in 1937, you could see that she completely changed her style. And this goes to my point about, you know, an impressionist painter would not be the best suited artist if they painted in that style uh, for a mural because it would be a little bit difficult uh, for the masses to read up on the wall. And so you can see that she has moved to a completely linear style. Um, that's very much in line with, with Ezra Winter's uh, uh, style, uh, in fact. And uh, this, is a, this was restored in 1993 by John Bertallon. There's a lecture by John Bertallon coming up as part of the uh, Murals Murals uh, program. And uh, it's, it's interesting. It's, it's all, uh, all imagery taken uh, from fairy tales. I wish I had a close-up. The image of Mother Goose in the far background is actually based on Carrie Hill's own likeness. Uh, so the little, little artists often do that. They will include themselves in a work just to see if anyone's paying attention, I think, mostly for self-satisfaction. Uh, but I, I think it's really fascinating how Carrie Hill changed her, her style so dramatically uh, for this particular commission. And although I cannot um, find a direct link, I, I don't, I can't help but notice the coincidence between the type of clear and vivid imagery that she's painted at the East Lake Library and another very famous work produced that same year. I can get this thing to advance. No White and the Seven Dwarfs, <laughs> which appeared uh, in 1937. And there is something to be said, there is definitely a link between uh, mural painting and, and, and Hollywood. 